G'day guys, Lee DePros here from fstoplounge.com. Today I'm here to tell you how to organise your photos. You know, forget your bad habits of putting them on the desktop or putting them in some miscellaneous folder because I'm here to show you how to get them off your memory card onto your hard drive because at the end of the day you want to be able to sort your photos from A to Z, find them in a year's time with ease. So here's how I do it. All right, I've just opened up Lightroom 5 and I'm in my library catalog. Um, you can see here all my images. Uh, a lot of them aren't selectable. They've got exclamation marks. That's because the hard drive's actually unplugged. You can see I've got three hard drives here. The F drive is unplugged. The H drive is the drive I'm currently working with. So I just want to import the photos from my recent shoot onto this drive. So to do that, I simply go import. So now I just want to choose where my images are. So you can see here I've chosen the memory card which is the untitled one. It's come up with my images which are five images. You may notice on the side of your screen that it will actually have all these open. I've simply closed them to keep things simple. The One thing that you do want to actually manage though is the destination because this is important in the way that we're, we're naming our files and folders. We want it to go into a specific folder. So first of all, I'm going to choose the H drive, which is the drive that I've got plugged in. I'm going to go down to pictures, my pictures folder. And you can see here, it's showing me exactly what's on my hard drive. And I've categorized everything so it's very easy to find. So now I can go into birds and select birds. And this here, this bird is a V-ringed plover or plover or whatever you want to call it um, and you can see here that I don't actually have um, that as a file or as a folder I should say so all I need to do now is create into a subfolder and what that hap what happens there rather than choosing them I've got bird selected but I can type in the name here of the bird so V ringed plover and this will actually appear under the birds now as uh, italic font. You can see here it's got a plus. So now Lightroom is saying that these five images are actually going to go into this subdirectory of birds, which is V-Ring Clover. So I do want to do that. So I'm just going to click import. Alrighty guys, now that you've actually sorted all your raw images out and put, dumped them into the folder called birds and you've actually gone in and named that species what it, what it was so you can find it again later on, you need to actually start actually editing your photos and then exporting them. And I'll, I'll tell you how to export them. First of all, you don't want to put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so forth. The reason being, the way computers work with a binary code, it puts ones and elevens together right next to each other. And that's just uh, a sure way just to get really annoyed at trying to find your photos. So what you need to do is actually put 001, 002, 003, and so forth, all the way right up to say 100, it will keep going. The reason why you do that is the actual photos will, will be in the correct order then once you export them out into your folder. So the way I like to do it is actually have your original uh, folder with your species name or your particular shoot that you've been on. And then from there, you can simply um, have all your raw images in that folder and then I actually rename the folder as a subdirectory as JPEG, TIFF, Internet Uploads, and so forth. So you can actually find the specific image that you're after with ease and know that all your raw files are in the same folder as all your TIFFs. So that makes it so much easier for everyone and you can easily share your photos a year later and not have any issues. Now that these images have imported, I'm simply going on the left here, choosing the hard drive, pictures, birds, and then going and choosing the folder. And what will happen? These five images will actually appear. And all I've done is I've done a simple edit on one of the images, so I can now export that. So I've done that in the develop module previously. So I'm just going to go into export. Okay, now it comes up with a, a dialog box, and this is very important as well, how you name things. We want to export to a specific location. So we want to choose the folder where the birds are. So we can just go choose. We go to H drive. We go to pictures that we've created. And you can see here, it's actually got the new, um, in the birds section, it's actually added this folder to my hard drive. And that's really important. I can now click that and click choose, or I can actually click a new folder. So in this case, I'm gonna call this one um, TIFF. 
So all my TIFF images are going to be in a subdirectory of vring plover, and all my raw images are going to be in the root directory of vring plover. So now I click choose, and you can see here that changes the folder structure. So now I know any images I export are going under that folder. Okay, next on the list, I can rename. Okay, this is very important. As a default, you'll find it will be something like this. And this is the example that they give you. It'll be Melbourne shoot two of one JPEG, and that's because I've got custom text there. What you want to do is actually go into edit. Okay. I'll just delete this. And this bar up here, you can actually customize the way you want to name your files. I find it's best to actually use custom text. I then add a space. And then I go into sequence and I choose insert 001 because I'm going with that insert. And you can see here I've got the example, I've got the custom text and the actual image sequence. Click done. And it will make more sense now because I can actually type in the name of the bird and I can export that out as number one. Okay, so V-Ring Plover 001. And what will happen if I've got multiple images, it will actually start from this number and work its way up. So that's really, really handy. So for instance, if the next time I import a or export a, a photo of this bird, I can actually make it number two. So I'm never going to rewrite over my number one image that was the first image of the bird. Okay, now you can see here it's a JPEG. We want to actually change that. So we're going to image format. We change that to TIFF. Um, just for this exercise, I'm just going to keep it sRGB and 8-bit. Don't need to worry about that so much. And I'm not going to add anything else. So now I can export that knowing that it's going to this folder and it's going to be a TIFF with this custom text and this image number. So let's just go and export that. All right, so now when I open up Finder and go into H drive, you can see in the pictures under birds, under V-Ring Plover, I've got in my TIFF section, I have 001. So now I can go and edit that in Photoshop. And you can see this folder structure allows, allows you to find anything very, very easily. All right, guys, let's address the problem with storage space. We're gonna run out, it's gonna happen. And the reason it's happening because our megapixels are getting more, our file sizes are getting much bigger, so your, your hard drive is going to end up being full like this one. So what do you do? Well, you simply go out and buy another one. Um, and the important thing to do on the new one is simply recreate the same folder system that you've got on this one onto the new one. So next time you go out and shoot that same bird, when you export it out on the old one at 002, you simply go into the new folder on this one and export out a 003. And the reason why you do that, let me show you. Because when you go to a heavier hard drive or a bigger hard drive like this one, you can grab all your images off your other hard drives which are full and not have any problem with actually having duplicate file names. So all your images are going to be in the same sequence. So you can dump all the 001, 002 on this one, and then dump all the 003 from the other one on this one. And it just means that all your files are going to be in sequence. One more thing, it's, it's probably the most critical. Uh, first of all, you want to actually invest in some good, good equipment here. Uh, it's not good to sort of scrape on the outside. I've done that before and I've lost the hard drive and it, and it hurt. It was like, oof, in the kidney, it, it was bad. Uh, it was about a year and a half worth of images, all gone, just like that. So either print your photos, um, so you've actually got a, a hard copy, or actually invest in some good hardware. So when I actually shoot, I try and shoot with SanDisk memory cards, which I find to be the better quality ones. I've even put them through the wash and they still work. Um, I also use a SanDisk memory card reader, and this one here is an ImageMate all-in-one, and it's fantastic. I swear by it, it's fantastic. Go and check out online. It's a black one with a blue light. You can't go wrong. The other thing I use is uh, your Western Digital hard drives. These are the MyBook series, and I find these have just been fantastic. They look good, they look stylish. I can put them all on a shelf together and they look cool. So I use the two terabyte ones. I've got three of those. Um, and just yesterday, my hard drive was full. So I do a yearly backup onto this one. 
uh, for my hard drives. I have like a whole day that I set aside and I simply sit down and back up all my images. This one's actually got four removable drives um, at one terabyte each. So I can actually uh, replace these in and out when I need to. So that is also a Western Digital product. So I would strongly suggest to invest in good equipment, invest in good memory cards, because guys, these are your memories. You don't want to lose them. I hope you got something out of this video because I know I got something out of it teaching you guys photography. So make sure you sort out your images, put half a day aside, two days aside if you need to, because it just needs to get done. You'll thank me in a year's time when it's much easier to find your photos. I know when I started, I really would have liked this advice. So just go and do it. No excuses. Stop watching this video. Don't click subscribe because you don't want to watch any more of these videos. They're absolutely hideous and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.